In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this 60 by 60 inch on canvas titled Hearts Full of Hope. It started with some bright reds and oranges and then shifted to these blues and greens. Okay, let's get started. Hello and welcome. I'm going to be creating on this 60 by 60 inch canvas that I get from Blick. It is one and three eighths inch profile, which means that's how deep it is. And it is um, a heavy weight type of canvas. Now I like to start off with some mark making. And if you have been watching my other videos, thank you so much for returning to watch this one. If you are new to my channel, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoy this video and that um, if you do enjoy it, if you'd subscribe to my channel. I like to start off with mark making. I use a variety of different mark making tools, uh, Prismacolor pencils, a regular pencil, some crayons. I'm gonna include a link in the show notes below and I'll also include it in the first comment in the uh, comment section below so that you can easily get to all of my links that I'll be including today. Now I mixed up some paint. Normally I would just put out some black paint but what I wanted to do was add a little bit more depth to that black paint so what I did was I included some I believe it was Payne's Gray and possibly just some regular gray. I've got some, some gray in a, in a jar. So by doing that, it just creates a little bit more depth to the black. Now I love using black because I like black showing through at the very end. And I like some areas to be pretty dark, but I also like bits and pieces of it showing through here and there throughout the piece. So that's why I add so much black in the beginning. I don't like to add so much towards the end because then it kind of looks like it's floating on top rather than being, you know, back behind all the other painting and uh, being pushed uh, to the back as opposed to coming forward. Here I've got a spray bottle just filled with regular water. I love drips. I love being able to make some kind of marks that are not ones that I had control over. So marks uh, or drips is one way for me to do that. Now in this painting, I'm going to start with some warm colors. And here, before I get started, I let that black dry. So I'm kind of treating this like I'm starting all over again. So I like to start with a little bit of mark making again. And again, the mark making in the beginning stages here really don't show up at the very end but it's just part of my process it's part of what i like to do i enjoy doing will you know some of it show through maybe little bits and pieces here and there but honestly we are so early in the stages that i don't think it will show through so i'm going to start with some warm colors i like to keep my warm and cool colors separate. And the reason I like to do that is so that I don't create mud. And that's probably one of the reasons why I let all of that black dry. Sometimes I'm impatient and I don't let it dry and I start painting in between all the black. This time I let it dry. And by letting it dry, I'm not going to get black mixed in with my red colors or my warm colors, creating it a darker red or orange or yellow or whatever I use. So this allows me to keep my colors pretty vibrant. Now the red that I used, often I like to use red directly out of the jar. And that is because I really like the pure color of the red and I don't like it when it mixes with yellow. Well, mixing it with yellow, of course, it's gonna create some orange, which I end up doing. But I don't like to mix it with white because it doesn't really come out to a very good red. Now I can mix it with some other reds like a quinacridone red, something like that to really uh, give it some more vibrancy. But again, this is the early stages. Only little bits and pieces of this red is going to show through on the very final piece. So I'm using a little plastic bowl there just to mix my colors. I do love working on my palette and my palette it has plastic over the entire piece so that I can use it as a palette. 
I'm using the same plastic on the wall behind me. And that plastic is four, the number four mil, M-I-L, plastic. And that's something you can find in the hardware store in the paint department. Ask them if they've got four mil plastic. It's a thicker, heavier weight plastic. Anything with four mil or higher is good. I know that, I believe that there's also like a eight or 10 mil plastic. I haven't tried that, that's pretty thick. But I really like this one. I've been using it for years. The one on my back wall, I've been in this particular studio in downtown San Jose, California for about a year and a half now. And I don't change out that plastic, it just stays up there. And then the plastic also on my table has been there uh, a year and a half as well. So I just peel back the paint after it dries so that I can just start fresh again. And really the more layers I have on there, the easier it is to peel it all up and, and have it all um, lifted and removed. I'm continuing here. I've got some pink now going on. So again, sticking with my warm colors. I'm taking these, I might add a little bit of white to it. There we go. So that white in the bottle there, that bottle is a Liquitex gesso bottle, but in it is actually Nova Color paints and, or, or excuse me, Nova Color gesso, and I'm using Nova Color paints. I like the big Liquitex bottle because I like to be able to squeeze out the, the gesso as I need it. And it's just much more convenient. I buy the gesso from Nova in the large gallon size. So very awkward to try to pour some out each time I need it. So this solution works really well for me. Now I'm coming in with a little bit more white added to that pink. I'm just filling in here and there. I'm not gonna cover all of it, but I'll cover up the majority of it. I also like to work the sides. You'll see me always working on the sides of the painting. I get up on, I've got a little step stool. You can see down at the bottom there, that teal color to get up there and get the very top of it. Now, one question that I often get is how do I get my canvas to stay up on the wall like that? And the way I do that, and it's really a really simple solution is and I learned that from someone else, but um, it is that I've got um, long screws in the studs. So three inch, I think they're three inch screws, long screws, and then I leave them sticking out about a half inch so that I can just hang my canvas on top of those screws. Now here in California, I believe our studs are about 18 inches apart. So it works really well for any canvases that are certainly larger than 18 inches so that uh, they can hang. Otherwise, it ends up hanging only on one and that's certainly not gonna work. So 24 inch canvases uh, are the ones that I normally have up here, 24 inch and, and larger. So there we go. I completed that first layer and I'm starting again with mark making. So I, I did all my warm colors and I have this uniform that I wear in the studio, as you can tell. I've got my black jeans. I've got um, I've got several different shirts that I change into underneath, layer up, depending on how cold it is. The studio that I'm renting out is in an old cannery building, and there is um, certainly no insulation whatsoever. Actually, in the afternoon, I'm kind of laughing because in the afternoon, there is sun coming through you know, peeking through this one hole that's up higher. So very little insulation. And on top of that, I have a studio that doesn't have a ceiling on it. So my ceiling opens up to the rafters where there's a bunch of windows and some natural light coming in, which I really love about that. So my, going back to what I wear, so, so at the studio, I keep several layers of warm tops that I can put on. And then I like to put on this shirt on top of all of that, just so I can keep warm. And I've got my heater running as well, which I love because then my paintings dry pretty quickly as I'm creating. But going back to, so I don't know if this was a different day or that same day and I've just let it dry for, for an hour or two. 
because I've got the same uniform on. Sometimes I can tell depending on what shirt I'm wearing. Like this time, I think I've got a brown one on. I can see it poking out from my, my uh, gray shirt there. Okay, so I've switched over to cooler colors. So I love this blue and it's um, ultramarine blue and some white added to it, which gives it more of a, oh, I think I, I just feel like it's kind of a periwinkle color almost. It's really pretty. So at this point, am I thinking about composition? Hmm. Yes and no. You could tell when I did the first layers of the warm colors, you can see I did some larger elements and some smaller elements so that I started kind of thinking about composition, but not really what the final is going to look, look like. More just putting in those elements almost like practicing on an ongoing basis. Even though a lot of those will get covered up, I like to practice the, the whole idea of putting larger elements down and smaller elements down uh, so that it just adds a lot of variety. So here you can see I've got my love for stepping stones. That's what those blue, big blue marks represent that are in the lower left corner. And then I'll be adding some smaller marks like I'm doing right there, so smaller circles representing my love for flowers and if you've been following me you know that I love fields of flowers and my art is inspired by fields of flowers. I just love flowers in general too. So I'm kind of filling in semi thinking about composition and definitely thinking about small small and medium and large elements and, and what I can be adding to add interest to this piece. Now this bottom is hard to get to. I really have to bend way down over so I can make sure that I am painting the very bottom side, um, the underneath side of the canvas. I, since I mentioned I like to paint all the way around the canvas. I love when I'm watching these videos while I'm doing the voiceover because it's always fascinating to me these different stages that I go through. And some of them, you know, from here, it looks really cool. But I have to tell you that if you were up close, you could tell that it's not a done painting. But, you know, from where I'm looking at it back here, I'm like, oh, that's looking pretty cool just the way it is. A lot of folks will tell me that I should stop earlier and... You know, again, I think that's because they see it from this distance and not seeing it up close where you can tell that it, just to me, it, does, it doesn't feel complete. It doesn't feel done. I think what's important is you've got to do what feels right to you and not what other folks, you know, think you should be doing. And when I first started creating and painting and posting and people would say, oh, yeah, you should definitely stop earlier. I really took that to heart, like, oh, well, maybe I'm just not doing this right, or, you know, maybe I should be listening to them. It sounds like they know what they're talking about, and um, you got to do what, what feels right to you, and that's what I learned, is I, I've got to do what feels right to me, and to me, what feels right is to continue going until I get to a place that I absolutely love the piece, and at this stage, as much as I'm looking at this and saying, oh, it looks pretty cool, um, I'm not in love with it. So I'll just keep going. So here I'm adding some darker areas, reintroducing some of that dark because I covered up quite a bit of it earlier. And I think this dark isn't really, um, it's not a pure black. Uh, I believe that I found my new love for, or refound my love for um, Payne's Gray really love the Payne's Gray being, you know, that kind of a dark blue and love it when I add some white to it. So I believe that some of those marks have got a lot of Payne's Blue in it, perhaps a little bit of black, but, but more so Payne's Blue. Now there I'm kind of offloading my brush. I like making those marks and scattering them around. Those are marks that I can't really plan for. They just come to, come off the brush and wherever they land, they land. And because we're kind of still in the middle stages, 
those marks are probably going to get covered up and I'll probably do some more towards the end. Adding some neutral colors in there. Neutrals are going to really make your brighter colors pop even more. So I like to introduce or, you know, include some neutrals in my paintings as well. More drips. I get asked if I know what it is that I'm trying to create or if I've got an idea in mind what the end result will look like. And I do not. Unless I'm doing a commission that is requiring me to create something that's very similar to something that I've done before, then I know what I'm looking for. But in this case, and right here, just let me comment, I'm picking up some of the drips that went down and I'd like to do that because what happens is then it leaves these lines from where the previous paint wasn't quite dry and it picked it up. So there's still lines there it's just that they are not the actual blue drips they're the removal of other paint that was underneath. A few sips of my tea there and onward. This particular painting took over four and a half hours. And I know that because when I uploaded all of the videos, I needed to shorten it. So I always check first, you know, how long did all of the video, um, how much time was on all the videos that I, that I have pieced together. And it was over four and a half hours. Uh, I think probably even closer to five. So in order for me to show this to you, you're certainly not going to stick around for five hours. As much as maybe some of you love my art and love watching me create, I can't imagine you want to stick around for that long. So I have sped this up quite a bit so that I can get it to just a little bit over an hour. I think it's an hour and 10 minutes. I like that yellow. I think I'm using cadmium medium yellow. That's one of my favorite yellows. I also have like a lighter yellow. I forget. I don't know if it's cad, um, cad yellow light or if it's a different, different uh, Nova color of yellow. I'm going to include a link that takes you to some of the basic colors that I like to use of, of the Nova color paints. So that link will be in the show notes below this video, or you can also find it in the first comment below. Now, if you're liking what you're seeing, I'd so appreciate if you give me a thumbs up and that lets me know that you like it, that I should create more videos like this. It also helps with YouTube knowing that you like it and that they should show it to other people. So that means that they're going to serve it up to more folks so that they can also see this video. So you're helping me and you're helping many others too. Isn't that blue so pretty? That's again the ultramarine blue with some white added to it. I just love that color. Now, the last few videos that I uploaded were of me working small. So I work small and I like to work large like this. And one of the challenges that I really had with creating small and then creating large is not only the transition from one to the other, but also I did such a great job of creating small uh, the way that I really love. And for me to transfer that to large, that took quite a bit of practice. I'm going to tell you that right now. It was not easy for me. Um, I really worked at it. And now I'm finally at a point where I can create very much the way I do on small on paper and supersize that to be on, for example, this 60 inch by 60 inch canvas. Just like with anything, it just takes practice and patience and 
and just doing, 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 practicing until you get there. And I was so happy once I got there because I really struggled with it for a number of months. I want to say almost coming up on a year of trying to create comfortably the way I do on paper and, and transferring it to this super large size. So if you're interested in seeing my smaller pieces or how I create small, you can check out my other videos that I, the last three that I uploaded are all small. And now I've got this large one. I think I might switch back to another small one. And then I, I go back and forth because honestly now I just pretty much record almost everything that I'm making just so that I have it available to upload. And I say almost everyone. There are some that I don't bother to turn the camera on. It's kind of like you guys are constantly peeking over my shoulder. So part of me is always conscious that the camera is, is rolling. So sometimes I like to not have it rolling just so I can freely create and not think about the fact that the camera might be on. Now, when you watch my smaller ones and, and and if you like them, you can also, as I kind of stumble over my words here, what I'm trying to say is I've got a recorded online workshop that I did that is available. It was a live workshop, but it's a recording as well. And that's available. It's over two hours of me creating smaller. So it's on 11 by excuse me, it's on 18 by 24 inch paper. So not super small, uh, kind of medium size, but I walk you through my process. I show you step by step how I go through everything. I also cover the whole process of color harmony and harmonizing your colors and how important that is in pulling your paintings together. So I do that and then I answer a ton of questions along the way. And I'm available to you to answer questions via email once you go through the workshop. And, and if you have questions, I'm happy to help out. And the workshop is a link to my YouTube channel. It's a private link, so you don't need any special software or passwords or anything like that to be able to watch it. And of course, you can watch it at your leisure. Uh, stop and go as many times as you'd like. Now, looking at it, it's, it's starting to come, you know, towards the end, but not quite there. Uh, slowly starting to head in that direction. I'd say we're still pretty much in the middle stages. All right, so I am back. And again, I have no clue. Is it a different day? I wasn't checking to see what shirt I was wearing. Uh, it's the same day because, and I know that because I had to change out my water. I was working on another painting while it was drying and my water got really dirty. So I needed to get that cleaned out. Start with some fresh water. I like using these plastic buckets. Sometimes I don't have enough room on my palette. As you can tell, it, all of my paints take up a lot of that space and I, I keep trying to push them out further. And for some reason, each time I open one, I, I put it way too close to my palette. And also sometimes when my palette is wet with paints that I don't wanna be using in my current painting, then I'll grab these little containers that I've saved so that I can mix paints in within the container there. So looking at my painting from here, I think it looks pretty cool right now, <laughs> if I don't mind saying so myself. But I know it still has a, a little bit of a ways to go. And I, I just like the reds that are kind of in the middle, red-orangey colors in the middle. I think at the end, I don't have the photo in front of me, but I think I 
more of it, it gets shifted around quite a bit. There's a nice neutral that I'm working with right there. And a great way for you to mix your own neutrals is to take a warm color and a cool color and mix them together. And as you know, that creates mud. But if you are careful, you can make a, a good neutral color with it. So mud is sometimes good too. It doesn't always have to be these bright, happy colors. Nature has a lot of brown in it. And I love nature, so definitely bringing that into my painting. Now one thing I don't like to do is I don't wash out my brush all that much. I think since I started this session I haven't cleaned out my brush unless I miss that. But the reason I don't like to do that is that's kind of my way of harmonizing my colors as I go. And also it just creates these cool colors when you've got whatever's left on your brush and you're mixing that in with a new color. It's creating a very unique color, one that is you can't get directly out of the jar. So I love doing that. I love creating colors as I go. Of course, I didn't love that paint that I put up higher. So I used my water to spray that down and get rid of it. That's the beauty of working with acrylics is you can let it dry and paint over it fairly quickly or you can, if it's still pretty wet, just spray it down and wipe it off. This artwork I ended up calling Hearts Full of Hope and I just felt I'm not sure if that was a title that I had saved. I like to save on my phone, in the notes area on my phone, words that will work for titles. And I believe that was one that uh, I had saved and I saw that and I thought, oh, that just seems perfect for this painting. I know sometimes coming up with names for paintings can be challenging. And one of the things that or one of the many things I like to do is I like to just put on my phone anything that I might hear or read that that intrigues me, that, that sounds like something that I might want to use as a title. And that way when I do finish a painting, I'm not stuck with, oh my God, I don't know what to call it, and, and just leave it sitting there for days on end because I can't think of a name. So by having this collection of names, I can easily pick one or or come up with a different one. Sometimes I'll just look at a painting and something will pop into my head. But for those times that it doesn't just pop into my head, I like going to my list. At this point, I would say that I'm probably a little bit more than halfway done. This painting I really did a lot of work on. I wouldn't say I did more than usual probably about the same, but it definitely went through a number of different stages. And again, that's because I'm going to keep going until I absolutely love it. And sometimes I love it sooner and sometimes I don't. And when that happens, I just keep going and keep adding more layers to it. If you're on social media, you can certainly follow me on Instagram, where I am very active, and on Facebook. I also like to post to Pinterest. So there's a few different places where you can find me besides YouTube. Lately, there's been a part of me that wants to experiment with something a little bit different, but I haven't figured out what that is yet. So I've been creating in this style for a number of years now, since um, spring of 2018, and I absolutely love it. 
this is a style that I feel really flows out of me. And of course, it flows out of me through a lot of practice that I've done over the years. But there's a little part of me that is kind of now starting to want to expand a bit and try something a little bit different, still being true to, you know, what I love, but trying to figure out a different way that I can express that. And I haven't figured that out yet. I think I'm going to need to spend a little time just working on paper and it, practicing, experimenting, figuring things out that way. I really like working on paper, especially when I'm trying to do something like that where I want to expand a little bit because, well, it's just paper and I don't get stressed out about it because, well, the paper costs pretty much next to nothing compared to a canvas or wood panels. So to me, I tend to be a lot more freer and looser. And really, that's where I learned the style of painting the best. I did so much creating on paper and I was very loose and relaxed because it was just paper and I wasn't treating it like it was precious and that really allowed me to experiment and explore and try different things try different ways of, of adding the paint different types of mark making and experimenting with different tools as well different mark making tools and some of the favorite ones that I that I like to use are the Prismacolor pencils. I also like to use just a regular number two pencil. I love the Neocolor two crayons. There's also Neocolor one. Neocolor one is not water soluble and Neocolor two is. And I, I just love the ones that are water soluble where I don't have full control over how it's going to move around if I put something wet over it. So that's why I like to use them. Then I also like to use China markers. I love the yellow, white, and black ones especially. So going back to, you know, working on paper, I think I'm, I'm getting to a point where I'd really like to sit down and just spend some time working on paper again and exploring a bit. I'm working on a variety of different marks, different sizes, looking at balance. I don't want too many of the same type of mark in one area versus, you know, um, spreading it out, I guess. And, and I've, I've been redoing that corner so many times. Anybody counting how many layers have been put up there? I tend to do that with the corners, especially. It seems like I'm always trying to figure out what color is going to work best there. And there I sprayed it down a bit. And I am lightly picking up the water, but still, you can't see it from this distance, but I'm leaving some of it on there still. So yeah, my corners tend to get a lot of different layers. And that's probably a lot of that has to do with it, it influences what other marks I've already put down. So if I've put down, I don't know, for example, if I put a lot of blue and green, I don't want all that blue and green in that corner as well. So that's probably why I've lightened it up a bit. Again, going back to the beauty of acrylic paint and just painting over anything that I'm not too happy about. There I'm offloading my brush again, making random marks around the entire canvas. All right, so I put down that kind of light brownish color, decided I didn't like that. Try something else. See, I wiped it off with a paper towel. I think it was too light. I love my studio space. It's probably about the size of a two car garage. And it is, oh, okay. I'll tell you what I'm doing here. I, I made gray and I'm trying to get gray on my canvas, but it looks like brown and it was driving me crazy. So 
Is it truly gray? It is. If I move the canvas away and we just look at the gray that I put on my plastic up there, it's truly a gray. But because I'm using these kind of warmer green colors and these blues, it's not looking like gray. It's looking like brown. And it was just maddening to me because I keep mixing a gray and I can't figure out why is it not gray, but it's influenced by the colors around it. So that's why it doesn't look like a true gray, even though up on my wall, and it's funny because I laugh at it, when I when I move the canvas, I look up there and I'm like, yep, that's truly a gray, but it just didn't look like gray on this particular piece. So I was tr struggling with trying to get more of a gray in there. All right, so I'm using um, a lighter value. And I like to make sure that I've got light and dark values in my paintings. And here I am doing that. I'm adding a lot more of a lighter color. And it's not a pure white. It's got some whatever I had on my brush is on it as well. Now, as I'm adding in all of these lighter colors, it just doesn't look right, but that's okay. I, I continue to work it and figure out how to get those lighter areas to look a lot better than they are now. So certainly, you know, as I'm stepping back from this point till the end, it's a lot more thinking as opposed to the beginning stages where I'm just freely making marks and throwing down paint. This part involves a lot more what I like to call the problem solving. And that just means, you know, if I put down some marks, how does that look? How does that work with everything else? Does it work? Does that color work? Does that size of shape work? And if it doesn't, well, what can I do to solve that? So. It's just going back and forth and figuring out what works, what doesn't work, and if it's not working, how do I solve that problem? And I really like that this part of the, the painting. I love the beginning too. Honestly, I love every stage of it. But this part, it's it really uses my brain a whole lot more. Now, what you probably can't tell, I've got an um, AirPod in my ear, and I am most likely listening to a podcast or I'm listening to an audiobook, one of the two. So thinking through this process isn't all that painful at all because I'm really engrossed in the words that I'm hearing, the stories that are being told. And so my brain is just kind of listening to that, but also visually looking at the painting and trying to solve the problems that I'm having with it. To me, it's really fascinating that, that the brain can handle all of that. <laughs> so back to adding some larger elements or not. I'm actually removing a little bit because I don't like it floating at the very top. So by removing a little bit, it looks like it's been pushed back. Okay, well, let's get rid of all of it. I didn't like it. Actually, I can see just a tiny bit of an outline on this. So I keep working this until I get to a point where I just don't know what more to do. And then that's usually when I take a break, whether it's the end of the day for me or just the end of trying to figure out where to go next. It feels good to just walk away sometimes and come back to it with fresh eyes and see where I need to go next. Oftentimes I'll take a picture of it in the final stage that it's at when I leave it so that later in the evening I can take a look at it on my phone 
and that usually makes it easier for me to figure out what needs to be done. And sometimes on my phone, just in the photo editor, I like to sometimes go in and change colors or make different marks on it to see if that's going to work better. That way, the next time I come in, it's easier for me to pick up where I left off and keep moving forward with it. Now, you've probably noticed that I've got some prints up around my work area. And those are copies of pieces that I've done in the past that I put up just for inspiration for myself. Sometimes when I get stuck and I don't know where to go next, I will just look up at those and say, oh, well, what do I see there that I'm not doing on my piece that I'm currently working on? All right, so came back and I am just going for it with all the mark making. I am, even though this feels like it's getting done, I like to just come in and just do a whole bunch of marks on it. And that makes it so that more of those marks are going to end up showing on the final piece. But it also means that there's still going to be quite a few layers of uh, paint going on and many of those marks will end up getting covered up. Here I'm just getting my paints ready. And ready to tackle it again. Looking at it from here, it's not that bad, but I just wasn't happy with it. It, it still needed more work. So there's a larger element that I've added in there and again pushing back a little bit by spraying it so that it's not a complete circle. Looks like some of it goes underneath the other layers. Now feel free to leave me questions down below. Always happy to answer questions for you. I recently posted a survey where I was asking what kind of videos I should be doing that are not painting related, but rather they're business related. So running your art business. And I had quite a few people respond, which was wonderful because it gives me an idea of you know, what kind of things I should talk about. And the number one response that I got from the survey was to talk about how to market your art. So that's a video that I'm going to be working on pretty soon and get that posted. And I think I'll include a few other business related videos as well. If there's a type of video that you'd be interested in that's business related, let me know in the comments below so that I can add it to my list. So I'm coming in here with really a dark color. This looks mostly black, but I think there's got some, I think there's some blue in, mixed in with that. So I wasn't happy with the values. I felt like I really took out a lot of the dark values, so I'm trying to add them back in. Not all of them will remain, like that corner that I just did. At the very end, I end up covering that up. But this allows me to continue working on it and, and adding those values 
just gives it some, gives it a lot more balance. Now you can see I've also added some larger marks in there, those those kind of slate blue colored ones. It needed a bit more larger elements to the piece. I felt like a lot of them got uh, were drowned out with just a, a lot of blending happening. So right there I'm adding some larger elements again. At this point, we can barely see those oranges and reds that I started off with. But up close, you'll be able to see them. I'll show you at the end. I do some close-up videos, and I've got a few pictures that are close-up pictures. And you can see bits and pieces of that red coming through. Again, I get folks who ask me, you know, why do you even bother to do that when it all gets covered up? And for me... It's all about the journey of this painting. I can certainly create something that just has one layer and it's and it's um, you know similar to this, but just one layer. But to me, that's very flat. There's no depth to it. There's no interesting bits of paint and and like a story behind it. I, I feel like it's very flat. So to me, that just doesn't work. I'd like to have the interesting details in terms of the history behind it, in addition to the larger elements, the smaller elements, the different types of brush marks, the different types of marks on it, whether it's done with my brush and paint or done later at the very end where I do my mark making with pencils that are on the final layer. To me, it all, it, it's all part of a journey, you know, kind of your own, just like your own journey in your life. There's things in there that get covered up, just like when you meet somebody, you don't tell them everything about your life. You pick and choose what you want them to know. Well, here I'm picking and choosing what I want you to see in this painting. You're not going to see all of that red and yellow and orange that was on the first layers, but I am going to leave a little peek here and there for you to see. One of my favorite colors is teal, and I end up using a bit more teal in this one as we get closer to the end. It's one of those colors to me that makes me super happy. Oh, and speaking of teal, so if you look um, in the bottom right corner as you're looking at this, now if you're watching me on your, let's see, on your desktop, you would definitely be able to see it. I don't know that you can particularly see it if you're watching it from your phone unless you put it into the full screen mode. I think you can see it then. And that is a round icon that is a teal color and it says Betty Frank's Art. And if you hover over that, it'll allow you to subscribe to my channel. I think there's a better balance now with some darks and lights than there was before. Using my fingers to kind of blend in that darker, darker circles that I created.
And how many times have I put color down in that upper corner? Anybody counting? I certainly lose count. Like I said, I just keep going until I love it and it's working with the rest of it. A lot of give and take when I'm creating. The other thing I like to do when the paint is still wet is to scratch into the wet paint and create some mark making that way as well. Now here I believe I'm using a rigger brush, which is like a script brush. It's a very fine brush with long bristles on it. And I love it because uh, I love making marks with it. Much thinner, smaller marks. So earlier I was talking about my studio space that I absolutely love. And despite the fact that, you know, there's no ceiling on it, and I do hear some other artists when they are in the studio. Fortunately for me, a lot of times when I'm in the studio, nobody else is around me. And there are, I'd say, probably about 10 other studios that are all around me that also don't have ceilings on them. So, you know, if everybody was there at the same time, we'd, we'd definitely hear each other. But it's amazing how many times I go to the studio and there is nobody around. Um, I just love that. It's like I'm just on my own there. But the other thing I love about being in the studio, and at the end, I think if I remember correctly, I show you my studio space. I've got a chair and an ottoman. I could put my feet up that is directly in front of this painting wall. And I love sitting there, whether I'm looking at a painting and trying to figure out where to go next, or I'm just sitting there doing nothing. This is, it, it's such a getaway for me from everything else. And I absolutely cherish my time there. So I added some larger circles up there. Now coming in with some kind of yellowish, mustard yellowish colored lines, and now a little bit of a brighter yellow. I had talked about in one of my other paintings, if I remember correctly, that I would work on doing, creating a, a piece that is a limited palette and keeping it within the same color family. So that's what this painting is. And I'm really happy the way, the direction that it was going or it is going at this point and, and where it ended up. Now lately I've been working a little bit more with similar colors staying with one color family. If you look at the very top of your screen there, you can see two of them that I have at the very top that are prints of two pieces that I did actually on paper when I was in Croatia earlier this year. And I really loved those. That was when I decided, you know, I'm going to give this a try and, and try to stick to kind of a more limited palette. And and within the same color family as well. And I just loved those two that I have up there. That's why I printed them and put them up there as inspiration for me. Okay, so we are really coming down to close to the end here. <laughs> Thank you for hanging in there and staying with me. I appreciate it. It's definitely a process and some days it's a long process. So here I decided, oh, let's see what yellow would look like. Does that give it a good balance? And the answer is going to be no. 
Let's see how quickly I end up painting over it here. I'm trying to darken it a little bit. Now it's gone to a little bit of more of a greenish color. Now does that work? Mm, I didn't like that either. I think at some point I also dry it with a hair dryer to get it to dry fast enough so I can put another color over it. Now up there I decided it needed a little bit more of a lighter color. And coming back to where I had some really light colors earlier and they just kind of disappeared after a while. So adding that back in. I would say that working on canvas this size is definitely a workout. I was at the studio yesterday working on a new commission, not quite this size, it's actually a 60 by 40. And by the time I got home last night, I was just wiped out. A lot of going back and forth, bending down, squatting down, it's all, it's all good walking back and forth, getting in my steps. Too bad I don't keep my phone on me so I can really know how many steps I'm doing. But any steps I do is good, whether they're counting on my phone or not. Added some more drips there and softening out that area a bit. When I add the lighter values, I don't always do it by filling in areas. Sometimes I'll do it by mark making, and that's what I did in that lower left corner is adding some lighter colors with mark making as opposed to just filling in that whole area. I've got my rigger in hand again, making some small, smaller, thinner marks. And they're adding a bit of a larger element and purposely skipping some areas so that it's not a fully enclosed perfect circle. Those kind of larger greenish, mustardy greenish marks don't look so bad there. I know I end up not keeping them, but now as I look at it, oh boy, here we go. Let's go with the bright yellow. It's kind of more of a green, isn't it? A brighter green. I think I was trying to balance it with the green that was over on the right side. It really sticks out like a sore thumb. And there, just offloading my brush a bit, leaving some marks here and there. I'm actually just with my fingers pulling a little bit of paint off my brush and then with my fingers just leaving marks here and there. and grabbing paint right off of the palette. And this is just more loose painting, very, um, 
uh, organic, I guess is the word, as opposed to using brush strokes. It's just um, here and there. Very loose. One thing I talked about in one of the videos I just posted, maybe it was the most recent one where I'm working smaller, is it's great when you can grab branches from your yard or from your walk or whatever, twigs, and dip those into paint. Um, and it's usually helpful to, if you're going to put it into paint, water down the paint a little bit and then use that to put marks on your canvas, paper, whatever you're working on. That creates some really loose, organic shapes. Here I'm going right back over those shapes that I had before that got lost a bit. All right, back to those. Those marks there represent flowers for me. And I'm just not happy with how they're working overall with the with the entire painting. I was recently interviewed by Allison Stanfield, who, oh my goodness, I just said her first name wrong. Oh no, I, it's correct, Allison Stanfield. For some reason, I was thinking I said it wrong. She wrote a book a number of years ago that is called I'd Rather Be in the Studio, which is a book I bought a number of years ago. <laughs> Really good book, and she also does a lot of teaching on how to run an art business and how to be an artist, so kind, kind of a combination of the two. But anyway, I was interviewed by her recently, and I'm going to put a link in the show notes and in the first comment if you'd like to listen to that. We talk about processes. We talk about how to, uh, one of the things that we that we talk specifically about me is how I manage all of my photos and how do I keep track of my inventory. So I talk about that. I also share very willingly how much money I've made over the last few years running my business. So if you'd like to learn more about me and learn, you know, a few things about how you could be managing your own business, give that a listen. It's a podcast. And if you want to just find it on your podcast app, it's called Art Biz, B-I-Z, with Allison, and it, it, you know what, I'm going to look it up on my phone right now, make sure I'm saying it correctly. Uh, so you can find it on your favorite podcast app, or you can just go directly to uh, the link that I'm going to provide. Anyway, it is Art Biz Podcast by Allison Stanfield, and it's got a ton of good video, um, excuse me, podcast that she, where she interviews a number of different artists. And then she also gives, um, in between those, she'll also give a lot of great tips and ideas of how to manage your business. So I highly recommend that you give it a listen. Okay, going back to those flowers, I finally got them to a color that I liked, I wanted, I felt like they were just sticking out way too much and I didn't like that. So they are blended in a whole lot more, but yet you can still see them because there's a bit of an outline there. And I liked that about it. So we are coming close to the end here. And again, thank you so much for still hanging out with me. If you are still here with me, I really appreciate it. So I'm closing up my jars. Looks like I'm calling it a day, but I know that I'm not quite done because if you look at that up upper right corner, I ended up overnight. I didn't like it. Every time I looked at the painting, that my eye kept going directly up there. So 
I tackled that right away and just brought in a little bit of a lighter brownish topish color a neutral which works really well next to those brighter colors well not exactly actually I think I go over it one more time because I think it was still standing out too much there we go I think that's more the color that I end up with something that blends in a bit more See, now my eye doesn't go directly up there, but stays a little bit, moves much more like, to me, my eye kind of goes in the bottom left and then works its way up and across. And I always like my paintings to have, you know, when somebody's viewing it, they can look at it from, you know, the eye enters it and leaves it in a variety of different places. So I am done here and I am doing my final mark making while that upper corner dries. And I started off with a pencil and did a bunch of scribbles up in that upper left corner. And now I've got another, I don't know if this is a pencil or a Prismacolor pencil, but I'm making more marks. And these marks tend to be a lot more intentional. So other than some of the scribbling marks that I like to make, the majority of these marks are very intentional. So there's circles and lines in a variety of different places. And the reason I like to do this, other than the fact that I love making marks, is I really like my paintings for folks to be able to view them from across the room and, and be drawn in and wanting to come up closer and be rewarded when you get up close and, and you get a chance to see even more detail than what you see from across the room. And that's a, one of the other reasons I really love doing this final mark making. And really in this stage, I can do as much or as little as I want. I try to do a little bit everywhere, you know, in, in all the different areas and around the sides too, as you saw just there. All right, so I'm going to carefully pull that out and sign it. I like to sign in pencil. That way, if I mess it up, I just erase it. Here, we're going to do some close-up shots now. And now you can see a bit more of the detail that you couldn't see from further back. You can see all the layering I've got going, all of the different mark making. There's a little bit of a side view there. I'm trying to show up closer some of those marks that I made at the end. A little bit of that reddish orange popping through. There I'm pointing out some of the circles that I made with a Prismacolor pencil. There's another Prismacolor pencil marking or markings, I should say, more than one. More layers and layers. And those circles there, those kind of bluish circles, those were actually done with ink tents. And then I put a little bit of water over them just to blur the lines a bit. And here you'll see my signature there in pencil at the very bottom. A little bit more mark making there, a little close-up shot. And there we have it. There's a little bit more ink tense pencil over on that side as well. There we go. And I'm going to give you a quick studio tour as well, show you my workspace here, all of my Nova Color paints. Here's where I keep some of my supplies. And then I've got some completed pieces. Those two blue ones up there are done. They're called Down by the Lake. The one down front is done. Uh, let's see, moving around. Those are all done. Those last two smaller ones at the end, they're not quite done yet. And there's the seating area that I told you about with my 
ottoman where I like to kick up my feet and just um, stare up at the wall for a bit. Okay, I added this as well. So I'm using workable fixative and then a matte varnish by Liquitex. I already did the spraying and I did that outside. Let that dry. And this is the next day I am putting the varnish on it. I like using the Liquitex varnish because I've been using it for years. I tried Golden and with Golden, you have to mix it with water and I really didn't like that process. I like things to be simple and easy whenever possible. And with Liquitex, I just use it directly out of the bottle. I pour it into this little container and the brush I'm using is a nylon brush from the paint department. Works great. I guess I could use something a bit larger when I'm working on this large of a canvas, but um, it's fine. It, it works out. And you can tell I've got another painting over on the far right that I'm going to be, that I varnished at the same time that I did this one. So getting a few of them done at the same time. That smaller one is a 30, a 30 by 30. So I've got three of those that I varnished as well. So just making sure all the sides are done and underneath going over it a couple of times but try not to overwork it either and then this will get two layers of of varnish there i am exhausted and done <laughs> all right some close-ups these aren't going quite as fast and you know the quality of these cl close-up pictures i feel like they're kind of a little drowned out in terms of the lighting but you can see some of the detail in, in this. See that some of the reds and oranges peeking through from the early layer. There's a side view of it. And I think that's it. Yep, there I am standing behind it. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that if you liked it, you give me a thumbs up and you subscribe. And then also share it with your friends and let them know about me. All right, there's a few other um, videos that you can watch here as well. Thanks again, wishing you a super fabulously creative day.